And so what we're going to do instead is the news. Well, actually, we'll do the news in a minute, because first I want to say a couple more things about that Bentley. You see, you said there it was like a slab of old England. Yes. But Bentley is owned by VW. Yeah. That car was styled by a Belgian, and it was engineered by a man called Ulrich Eichhorn. <laughs> Doesn't sound very British. Are you Does presenting it? Top Gear, or are you writing a letter to the Daily Telegraph? Well, I'm just saying that you know immediately that that car is German, because it's got too much power. They've overdone it, as usual like they did on their French holiday in 1939. James, <laughs> James the Queen is German, but yes. you don't sing Deutschland, Deutschland, Uber Alleys every time she comes on the television, do you? Well, I do, actually. Yeah, yes. he does. <laughs> okay. Should we do some proper news? Yes. No. What? No, because you know every TV show in the world now has a campaign? No. They do. Jamie Oliver's going, don't eat chips, eat weeds, and it's Gordon Ramsay's one. You've got to kill your children's pets and eat them. <laughs> so I've come up with a campaign we should do. Oh, no. Road signs. No, too late, they've already been invented. No. Moving on. No, get rid of them. What? Get rid what? of them. No. Have you seen that? Councils these days, that, oh, there's a space, we could put one in there. And they just write rubbish. There's one on the M40, if anyone said it, it says, spray possible. Well, it might be. It was a June day when I went past it. it, it spray impossible is what it should have said. <laughs> if they're going to list things that are possible, they could put being eaten by a cow. Possible. <laughs> And then, have you seen, in the olden days, OK, you used to be able to have a crash and it was a fairly foregone conclusion you weren't going to hit anything. Now you're bound to hit a sign saying, deer. <laughs> how do you know there's a deer? How do they know where the deer is? Why don't they just put the deer sign on the deer? And then it will always be... <laughs> that would work. Why there don't are, they do that? There are stupid ones, you're right, like the falling rocks sign. Whoop. What are you supposed to do? Yeah. Speed up. Yes. Slow down. 95 no, no, mile an hour to if avoid the them. rocks are falling, why don't they stop the rocks falling down if it's a continual problem? That would be a better spend of money. It is. There's a very good sign near where I live, actually, that says, changed priorities ahead. And it's absolutely right, because I was driving down there the other day and I thought to myself, I'll work harder and pay my mortgage off and be secure <laughs> in my old age. And then I went past the sign and after another 10 or 20 yards, I thought, no, I'm going to go to the pub. <laughs> So it works. Yeah. Now, if you want to join our campaign to uh, get rid of all road signs or send us a picture of the most pointless one you've ever seen, write to us at uh, Top Gear. Oh, Christ, we moved offices. Where are we now? We're, no idea. We're upstairs. We're above the one show now. Yes. Yeah. There we are. Top Gear, above the one show, <laughs> London. That'll find us. Now, shall we do some news? Can we have some proper mm. news now? Yes. Oh, bad news. What? The Dacia Sandero. It's delayed. Oh, no. Anyway, last week, <laughs> we, uh, we introduced a campaign to rid Britain uh, of its signposts. And it seems to have uh, struck a bit of a chord with the, with the, uh, with the country. There's been sent loads and loads of stupid signs that need taking down. One of my favourites is this one. Now, quite apart from the fact that <laughs> the sign costs 500 quid, how long was the meeting and involving how many people and how many biscuits before they said, no, we can't put 10 miles, people will think we're just making it up? So, what, after 11 miles, are the squirrels just grey again? It's very precise, isn't it? It what is. If, what if one day you got a really brave red squirrel that said, I'm going to go for the 12? <laughs> or he was reaching over for a nut. Can I show you Never. another? Another really stupid sign? Look at this one. Now, I live in the countryside and I know... <laughs> Squirrels don't have antlers. Well, actually, I have been tossed by a squirrel like that at I'm Chatsworth sorry. House. <laughs> I mean, head-butted. No, not tossed. Head <laughs> that tossed. is the technical expression. I wouldn't be surprised if one of your clubs offers squirrel tossing. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> now, um, you know the, um, the, the, the campaign we're having to uh, get rid of stupid, unnecessary signs? Lots of people have been very kindly sending in uh, examples. Check this one out. <laughs> if you look for... <laughs> yeah, no, no. If they hadn't put the sign there, he wouldn't have hit anything. Yeah. <laughs> Don't put unnecessary signs at the side of the road. Please, stop it. We're doing this to shame the councils that put these things up, OK, without thinking about it. My favourite sign of the week, sent in by a viewer. Here it is. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> what for? It's not even true, is so it? So I'll tell you something incredible, OK? You know these new eco signs they're putting up everywhere? They've got their own little windmills and their own solar panels. No. Do you know how much they cost? No. 3,000 quid. 10,000 pounds. Of our money, 10,000 pounds. And, by law, 
there has to be a conventional sign next to them saying the same thing for when it's dark and not windy. Which makes the £10,000 sign completely pointless. Yes, if you're going to be eco, don't put the bloody sign there in the first place. <laughs> we are being governed by imbeciles. Yeah. Great news. What? The Dacia Sandero. I've got a new picture. <laughs> Ooh. Anyway, I think we've had uh, more signposts sent in uh, this week. You know, we're having this campaign to get rid of unnecessary signposts at the side of the road. And um, we had one in. Well, imagine if you're driving along thinking these roadworks ahead look really complicated. I hope they put some signs up to simplify it all for mm -hmm. me. Well, they have. There you go. That's made it all. <laughs> now I know what I'm. What is? <laughs> My particular favourite from the week is this one. <laughs> As opposed to what? Gradual gunfire. <laughs> um, here's mine. <laughs> <laughs> Some bloke nailed that to the post, stood back and said, Yes, I don't see anything wrong with that. Well, it could be in the other direction. I want to see what you mean, so it's like a <laughs> yes. <laughs> You know a Securicor van, OK? Yes. Driver's got a helmet, truncheon, they've got bulletproof glass. What have they got in about? 50 quid? Box of stamps? <laughs> a tanker? 40,000 litres of fuel. 50,000 quid. And all he's got to fend you off is a rolled-up porn mag. <laughs> Are you suggesting people go out and steal petrol tankers? Not Cause... people, no. We do. We st <laughs> Put it in here. Google Earth will never spot it. <laughs> So, honestly, because if you think about it, 50,000 litres That's a lot. of fuel, OK, that would be enough to get your Mustang home. <laughs> <laughs> well, to Guildford. Yeah, to Guildford, that we could fill up there. No, I'll tell you, it's a brilliant idea. Right, let's do the news. Now, round where I live, there is a new system for paying for your parking using your mobile phone. But the difference is, it responds to voice commands, and the really amazing thing is, it works. Until you get to a bit where it says, in one word, describe the colour of your car. In one word? God, yes. Like wo no. Everyone would just go, um, and then it would just be, um. Exactly. <laughs> well, I paid for 20 minutes parking with a uh, Fiat Panda 1.2 Eleganza in... Uh. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's quite because you've got to describe the colour in one word. Exactly. So, well, if they ask me, lovely. <laughs> now, as you know, we get uh, quite a few uh, letters of complaint on Top Gear, and a lot of them are from communists and hippies, obviously, yeah. so we just ignore them. <laughs> anyway, look, last week, OK, we thought nobody would be watching because that epic tennis match was on, which... We were all watching. Which we were watching, yeah. <laughs> anyway, it turns out that one person was watching Top Gear and, boy, is he an eagle-eyed chap. Eagle-eyed chap isn't what you called him when his letter arrived, mate. No, I called him something smaller and fruitier than that, yes. nevertheless. <laughs> he says, OK, he was watching the show and I was driving an Alfa Romeo along the road, and he says, and he hasn't just complained to the BBC, he's complained to the police about this, that I clipped a double white line. Well, here's the, here's the footage. Uh, yeah. Ooh. Yeah. I mean, it's... That bloke should have been at Wimbledon, actually, with those sort of... <laughs> Crossing the white line spotting skills. Mm. Uh, anyway, it does appear I'm banged to rights, and uh, you know, I think apologies uh, where apologies are necessary. I'm very sorry. Uh, I shouldn't have done it. I'm normally very uh, fastidious about that sort of thing, but uh, there we are. I'm a mistake. Good job I'm not a brain surgeon. Um, <laughs> hey, now, bad news. This week, James popped round to see me, okay, down my uh, local pub, parked his motorcycle outside. Not illegally. No, it? very ne very considerate. No, it was illegal, that's right. It was illegally parked, but not inconsiderate. Yeah. No, exactly. Find £120. 120 quid. Now, here's the thing, all right? Both of us, in the not too distant past, have had television stolen. So how come they've got the manpower to find your slightly illegally parked motorcycle when they say that they can't find our televisions? 
I know, I don't understand it, because I rang up the woman on the uh, parking ticket hotline, inquiry hotline, mm. and I said to her, have you found my television? She had no idea what I was talking about. <laughs> I think that if you've had something stolen in your life, how many people here have had something stolen, a lawnmower? Well, right, nearly everybody. It should be illegal for the, uh, the police to do you for a trivial motoring offence until they've returned whatever it is you've had stolen. Yes. Does anybody That's here think, yeah, I think there we are. If you're watching this, Mr Brown, that's 100% of British people agree with me. <laughs> right, the news. Now, we were sent a picture this week of a biker caught uh, in Holland, I think it was, doing 137 kilometres an hour. And, well, here's the picture. It kind of tells its own story. There's one key thing there. He's yeah. not on it. Interestingly, he wasn't prosecuted because he claimed he wasn't riding the bike at the time of the... <laughs> What did he claim he was actually doing, though? Well, he said he was washing it and it fell over. Yeah, and it slipped <laughs> and it sort of accelerated and kept building speed. There's a Top Gear top tip here, actually. If you're driving along, OK, see a speed camera, no chance of slowing down, leap out. <laughs> yeah. Don't do that if you're a coach driver. No. <laughs> hey, I've got a theory. Oh, God, don't you start with theories. We have enough with his every week. No, it's a good one. I think Citroen is the only manufacturer that has a whole range of good-looking cars. Very good. Oh, that... What? Well, think about it. I am thinking about it. The cross-dresser. That's what not a good-looking <laughs> The cross-dresser's the weak one, but apart from that, they're all good-looking. Think of another Picasso. one. Picasso. So. Ah, the Picasso. You say that, but there's a new one. Here it is. Anybody think that's not funky and good-looking? It's not bad-looking. It's all right, terrific. The C4. C4's good, C5's good, Pluriel. C6. Yes! <laughs> Cock. I forgot oh, about yeah, that. Yeah, you forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> It's a good point, though, that. Can anybody here think which car maker doesn't make an ugly car? Well, across their whole range, yeah. not an ugly car in the range. Alpha. Alpha? Oh, oh, no. No, you... No, 8C, Brera, 159. All good-looking sorry. cars. I'm very sorry, but they've just announced the Mito. Here it is. And that is a Minger. That is an ugly... <laughs> that is a Minger. Yes, Minger. Has anybody else got any ideas? Aston Martin, no. DB9 convertible. That's not good looking. It looks like it's bent. Hummer. <laughs> Hummer. Who said Hummer? Mike, you're thinking. No, right. they're consistently ugly across their range of one car. <laughs> and they're designed by Americans who have the aesthetic ability of giraffes. <laughs> I know the answer to this. There's a surprise. Vauxhall. Eh? That's it. What? Are you sure? No. Well, think about you it. Might have Vectra a point. is going to be replaced with the Insignia. Which is Fantastic good. looking car. Uh, they've got the Astra. That actually is a That's good looking. Course is really good looking. Have you seen the Agila? We've got a picture of the Agila somewhere in off. There. Sweet! Oh, don't say sweet. <laughs> sweet little car. God, is it? is now the only car maker in the world that doesn't make an ugly car. There's no real Minger in the race. No, there isn't a Minger. What do you say, Baldy? <laughs> I can't hear a word you're saying. I'm very old. What? It's a, it's a small one. I've just put back a kilo or something. The Aguila? Yeah. Were you watching the television? <laughs> that, see, my... That, you know, come here. Let's look at that. It's sweet! That's not the one in the showroom. <laughs> You've seen one in a Vauxhall showroom? Yeah, over at Fairroom. It's ugly. It's probably old, that's the problem. Ugh, there's a camera going away. It's unbelievable nobody's listening to a word. We sound as doing that high-pitched squeak. That's really pretty. Anyone who buys one of those, I'll sleep with them. <laughs> I went on the internet this week, oh God. and I found this. <laughs> it is just pure pornography. Look that, at it. It's film. Look at it. <laughs> that is a convertible version of the uh, Alfa Romeo 8C that I was driving a few minutes ago. That is gorgeous, though, isn't it? Don't you think that's gorgeous? You know that company that's bought Jaguar? Tata. Yeah. Mm. Um, while we were off, they made a big noise about introducing a £1,500 car. Well, they've done it. Here it is. It's called the Nano. Ooh. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Well, they saved money on the styling because they've just based it on this. It, see, look. <laughs> eyes, little bit there, and then even these little ears there. It's exactly the same. Is that a punker waller? Pokemon. No. <laughs> I, mean, I meant that. Pokemon, yeah. The thing that worries me about this, go back to look. It's like one of those Doctor Who monsters that has no facial features. <laughs> it's just going to terrify children. Well, it has no features at all on it, but this is the luxury version. That's the luxury one. Well, how much more basic could it be? What could you lose? Well, I can tell... 
you know it isn't the base model because if it was the base model, you wouldn't be able to see it because the mule would be in the way. <laughs>
Uh, right. <laughs> Boris has got a round of applause. However, in the interest of political balance, um, I do have a complaint about Boris, because he said when he was campaigning he was going to get rid of the bendy buses, didn't he? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, what's the delay? Well, hang on, give him a chance. Well, how long's he been in office now? Well, two months. Exactly. Two months? Yeah. Yeah. Time me. <laughs> right, we've got a phone. Hang on. Ready? Go. Is that Reg Varney? <laughs> right, you know those big long buses with elastic in the middle? Get them off the road. Don't send them out ever again. Sell them to the Belgians or someone, all right? <laughs> Was that two months? Eight seconds. Eight seconds. Come on, Boris, hurry up! <laughs> Sorted that one out. Uh, good. Oh, now, hey, TVR, all right? You know it was bought by a Russian business boy a few yeah. years ago. Actually, it wasn't. It was bought by his father as a sort of playset for him. <laughs> and he crashed it into a hillside, and now TVR's gone. Very sad. However, turns out that he still owns the intellectual property rights, and he still owns the moulds, and he says he's going to bring TVR back. We've actually got a picture here of him testing these new models with his friends. <laughs> He said this week he was going to announce which model would come back first, but then his mum said he had to come inside for his tea, so... <laughs> News from Korea. They've made a... High and Dye's made a new coupe, and I've got the sneaking suspicion the designer sneezed when he got here. Oh, yes. I think he may have been allergic to the spaniel in his sandwich. <laughs> Maybe... <laughs> Maybe his lungs bit his ankle while he was drawing that bit. No, no. seriously, if you go to Korea, don't order a cauliflower cheese, because no. it won't be what you think. <laughs> Anyway, this is called the Genesis, all right? Which probably means that after a couple of years, the front will leave and Phil Collins will move in there instead. No, actually, strictly speaking, Phil Collins will come round from the back mm -hmm. to take place at the front. Oh, leaving Chester Thompson at the back? Yeah, exactly. And then occasionally, Phil Collins will have to go back to the back with Chester Thompson. Yes. I don't know what you two are saying now. No, it's got a V6 engine, 3.8 litres, and in between the bank, you've got a 25-minute keyboard solo. <laughs> You're using words, but it means nothing. Would you rather it were called the Hyundai Westlife? Yeah, all right, thank you. The Hyundai Girls Aloud yes. Hammond Edition. All right, <laughs> thank you. Now, good news. Jaguar has found a pound <laughs> and has decided to spend it tarting up the, uh, the XK. This is it. It's the XKR. S. Uh, it's essentially the same, just with different suspension. And it's got a Bluetooth system in it, OK? Now, have you ever connected anything up using Bluetooth? No. Has anyone managed to...? Yeah. Yeah. What, did you...? What? It is not easy. <laughs> I was driving this thing on... You're driving it along and it says, do you want to dock your phone to the dashboard? It says, enter the pin code 1547. So you put 1547 it says, no, that's wrong. Yeah, but technically, I think, in that jag, it says, do you want to mate your phone? It does. Well, if you're trying to encourage them to mate, I think a box of chocolates and some nice music <laughs> would work better than a <laughs> No, it is. It's just impossible. Absolutely what? impossible. So you're trying to encourage your phone to have sex with the dad? Yeah. What is it they do to encourage farm animals to mate? Because they do, don't they? they no, they do. You have to wait for the lady cow to be on heat. Then you put the bull in there. That's no good. You can't wait for your dashboard to have a period before you make a phone call. <laughs> How can you possibly know when your dashboard's having its period? <laughs> because the sat now would lose its temper for no reason. <laughs> I think you found out for a few years you'd discover your dashboard had been faking all its connections. <laughs> <laughs> with, it <laughs> with your best mate's mobile phone. <laughs> <laughs>
in exchange for the speed cameras that they put up all around the town. And he says it's a blatant tax on the motorist, and he's getting rid of every speed camera in Swindon. We have to honour him. We can't just let this moment pass. So no, no. I mean, in the, in the official register of interest, it says that he hasn't accepted any gifts or hospitality. Well, that's going to change right now because we have this for him. It is the Top Gear trophy of excellence for services to common sense. <laughs> and it is yours, Mr Greenhouse. Services of common sense in the face of blatant government stupidity. Yes. You want to pop up here and get that? We've even provided you a chair. It is the Top Gear throne of gratitude. <laughs> Can can I just say though, mm. if you do live in or are going to drive through Swindon over the next mm. few weeks, they're all going to be watching to see if it works. So please be careful. <laughs> if you do happen to have any sort of accident in Swindon, wait until it's dark and push the wreckage into devices. Yeah. <laughs> and then claim that you hit speed. Cap. That's what did it. <laughs> hey. Great news. What? I've been sent more information on the Dacia Sandero. Excellent. <laughs> Thank you. Excellent. Hey, now, you know the new Citroen Berlingo? Okay, yes. this is a car we like very much. It costs 11,000, less than 11,000 pounds. And for that, you get a very big, very spacious car with the best ride, frankly, of any car under a Rolls Royce. I've been thinking, how do they do a car like that for less than 11 grand? So I went on the internet and I found this. <laughs> OK? I found this. It's the uh, Citroen website, yeah? You know how they always list what a car comes with as standard? Yeah. You can tell when a car firm is desperate to think of something when they've got laminated front windscreen. Wow! <laughs> as opposed to what? Just a sheet of glass nicked from a greenhouse? Yeah, so, no, it gets better. It's got a single front passenger seat. Huh? And manually adjustable door mirrors. As, a, as opposed to what? The only alternative is electrical, isn't it? Which is better, so that's just saying it's something it hasn't yeah, got. Yeah, it hasn't got electrical dormer, is it? It hasn't got alloy wheels. It's a very good car, uh, as long as you want something that's equipped like a Romanian jail. <laughs> Listen, while we were off the air, OK, I had a look on the internet, and this was on it. Whoa! What's <laughs> here? Mm. Now, I can believe that. Something else that was on it was this. OK, yeah, OK. Yeah. That's, yeah. Now, this guy, okay, he's come down here, crashed through the, uh, crashed through that, and he's spun up there, and he is the luckiest man alive. What's lucky about that? Cut to the wide shot. Whoa! Oh, there he is. <laughs> that's where, that's the centre of the earth. I know. How long ago did that happen? Six months. Has he stopped screaming yet? <laughs> <laughs> One of those screams where you have to draw breath. Something bad's happening. <laughs> ah! <laughs> <laughs> More screaming. They're still, still screaming now. I'll be sitting at home going, what's on the other side? Ah! <laughs> Six months of screaming. Hey, Audi's bought a photocopier. No. Yes. No, wow. it's a, well, bear with me, it's a really good one. Because what they did was put the Q7, you know, the big thing, Q thing they've got, they put that through their new photocopier at 75% and made this the Q5, which is a whole new Audi, you see? It's, it's just exactly the same. <laughs> but, I mean, it really is. Just... Seriously, is that a new car? The... No, it's a which new car. Which one's the blue one? This the one is the, the new five. one. It's about 75% the size of that one. Have your mum and dad got a photocopier? What? Oh. <laughs> Yes, and it was stuck at 60 per cent. 60? Yes, that's right. <laughs> Moving on. Hey, great news. What? The Dacia Sandero is almost here. When? Next year. Great. Now, the Toyota Urban Cruiser... <laughs> that is the stupidest name I've ever heard of. Because, forgive me if I'm wrong, but isn't an Urban Cruiser someone who wears a Mac and isn't allowed within 200 yards of a primary school? <laughs> They may not have thought that through. They haven't. I mean, that's not going to work as a school-run car if the police arrest it every time it goes near the gate. <laughs> I went on the internet this week and I found this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I also found this. 
What that should say is lane closed so that we can impose a preposterously low speed limit on the lane that isn't closed and then put average speed cameras up so we can catch you speeding and fine you and spend the money on signs with squirrels on them with antlers. That's what that should say. <laughs> now, have you ever wondered what all that writing on the side of your tyres actually means? No. <laughs> Honestly, couldn't care less. Well, don't wonder no longer. I've because it's all been deciphered in this handy cut-out-and-keep guide to what all the writing on your tyres mean. Look at Who's that. done oh, that? Okay. Who's done... How boring do you have to be to do that? <laughs> well, it's, it's to be interesting. What have you done it? All right, then, what's the number seven mean? Number seven. Well, I've got the key here. That's of no relevance to the UK market. There you are. It's oh, thank God. <laughs> I've got a question I want to ask. What? What if this turns out to be really good. Well, it won't. it won't. No, but what if it does? Well, it won't, will it? Well, it's the new Chevy Camaro, um, and they've really thought about it. It looks brilliant, obviously. It's got a 6.2-litre V8, and they've given it independent suspension all round. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> Independent. So they yeah. looked at a car and they thought it's got four separate wheels. Maybe what if we treated them all sort of separate? Yeah, like they've been doing in Europe for a hundred years. <laughs> I still think, what if that? Look at that. <laughs> turns out to be good, and it could. Richard, you don't know yet. Richard, it the Americans good. are good at herding bison. The end. <laughs> still and that's... maintain it might turn out to be good, and then oh, we'll all watch. Okay, what is this underneath? Underneath this is a Vauxhall VXR, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, which is actually a Holden. So what the Americans have done. Yeah, is they've gone, we need some sophistication here. We'll call the Australians. <laughs> that is like saying, I want some style for my wedding, I'll get seven crates of lager. <laughs> Do you know, you're the sort of person, I could show you a picture of Paris Hilton, and you'd say, what if she turns out to be intelligent? Well, what if she did? <laughs> what if she did? All right, that's enough news. Great news. What? The days... <laughs> <laughs> they know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> The Dacia Sandero has gone on sale in left-hand drive market. <laughs> nice. Now, just one more thing. Did you see the papers this week about Prince Charles running his DB6? He asked it on wine. Yes, yes. I did. Why doesn't he use petrol? <laughs> it's not like there aren't petrol stations, it's is it? It's cheaper and everything. Yes. I don't get it. What? It's well, a waste. Yes. I know it's a waste of good wine. Unless, of course, he's... Nasty wine coming from your engine, sir. Yes, I know, it's the South African. <laughs> Uh, right, that is the end of the news.